I'm going to share with you some verses from Isaiah 21. And um, might be a bit difficult to listen to. Um, Isaiah 21 verse 3 says this. At this my body is racked with pain. Pangs seize me like the, those of a woman in labour. I am staggered by what I hear. I am bewildered by what I see. My heart falters. Fear makes me tremble. The twilight I longed for has become a horror to me. What an encouraging passage to start off with on a Thursday morning. Bright sunshine outside. He's been uh, given a prophecy of the judgment against Babylon. You think he'd be pleased, but of course he realizes the uh, the suffering, the pain, the murder, the the violence involved in it. So he understands the cost, even of this judgment on their oppressor, Babylon. T.S. Eliot once said that uh, people cannot stand too much reality. We try to take refuge in fantasy. That's why we watch so much TV, social media, uh, computer games, whatever it may be. It's an escape from reality. And sometimes that's really, really useful to be able to do that. I watched an old black and white movie yesterday afternoon after work on TV. Um, Our Man from Havana with Alec Guinness. It was gently entertaining. But also we need to look at the reality of the situation we're in. I was talking to another pastor uh, this week and we were both kind of observing the, the indifference to Christianity and even the hostility to Christianity in some circles today. The way in which the cultural debate, uh, for example, on same-sex marriage, sexual morality in general, has, has gone against biblical teaching how difficult it is to evangelize in the present climate and how COVID has affected the churches and uh, encouraged people not to attend church and not to participate even online and not knowing what the future is. You can become very depressed about it. I, I don't. Um, one of the strange things is that I'm, I'm quite a negative person. Some of you know that. Um, and I commented to this uh, this friend that I, back in the day, reading uh, Francis Schaeffer's books, if you haven't read any, read some. He's been dead a long time, but still very good to read. Talked about a post-Christian society. Uh, and talked about the philosophical shifts in, in the culture. And um, so in a way, I was kind of, I've, I've always kind of thought about us as a kind of minority, a cultural minority. Then I read a lot of Anabaptist stuff uh, where, again, we're a minority. And, and that's a good thing. We are the leaven. We are the yeast in the, in the lump um, giving life. We are a creative minority, according to Arnold Toynbee's concepts. We are the contrast society, as Lofink puts it. We may not have the numbers but we are an influential minority. And I think that's a biblical pattern. And we get lured uh, into a false, of sense, a false sense of security uh, when we are a majority, when we appear to be on the up. Um, we need to realise our true position. So this friend of mine said, oh, so, so you're positive because you're negative. I said, yeah, that's right. I'm positive because I'm negative. But it's our task to be watch men and watch women. In uh, Isaiah 21, verse 8, it says, And the lookout shouted, Day after day, my Lord, I stand on the watchtower. Every night I stay at my post. Look, here comes a man in a chariot with a team of horses, and he gives back the answer, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of its gods lie crushed, lay shattered on the floor. My people who are crushed on the threshing floor, I tell you what I've heard from the Lord Almighty, from the God of Israel. So God's people are crushed and they hear the news that Babylon has fallen. There's a sadness about that because there are, there are people in Babylon who will suffer. But it's the role of the watchman to keep an eye on what's happening. 
Many people stopped watching the news on telly or reading a newspaper because it's depressing and they don't want to be disturbed. I think it was Karl Barth, the theologian, who said that we should read the, read the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. We could say the Bible in one hand and the online news in the other. We need to watch for the signs of the times. Sometimes that'll be great. Sometimes we will feel disappointed. The next passage, 11 and 12, says a prophecy against Duma, which is a word play on Edom. Duma, Edom. Uh, and it means silence or stillness. And it says this, someone calls to me from Seir. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replies, morning is coming, but also the night. If you would ask, then ask, and come back yet again. Sometimes there's a time of silence, and we don't know what's happening. We keep watch. We know there's morning. We know there's light coming. But we know that there'll be darkness as well. You might find that a little bit depressing. From someone who gets depressed, I find that quite helpful. <laughs> as an admission of reality. We're not going to be optimists or pessimists. Billy Wilder, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Jewish film director, said about the German Nazi death camps, he said the optimists are in Auschwitz. The pessimists have swimming pools in California. What he meant was that the, German, the, the, the Jews in Germany in the 1930s, those who were optimists who thought everything was going to work out, stayed and ended up in the death camps. Those who were pessimists and thought, this is terrible, we've got to get out of here, ended up uh, quite prosperous in, 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 in the USA. I mean, it's not true for everybody, but it's a, it's a quite an interesting phrase that he came up with. Um, but, you know, optimists can be unrealistic. Pessimists can be unrealistic because sometimes there are opportunities which the pessimist miss, misses. The phrase I would use is hopeful realists. We're realists about the problems, whether they are personal in our personal lives or in our society and culture and the mission of the church. At the same time, our hope does not rest on circumstances or trends, but on the word of God. And it may be at this time in this place, things may not be going so well. But in the perspective of eternity, and the word of God and the promises of God, we know that he will achieve his purposes. That's why the sovereignty of God, the providence of God is so important. And this transcends the difference between Calvinists and Arminians. Both believe ultimately in the sovereignty of God. He knows what he's doing. And so I can look at the reality straight in the face and affirm my trust in God. Father God, thank you that you are in control. Thank you that you enable us through revelation, through understanding, to get a handle on what's going on in our day and in our lives. Help us to look reality in the face, but help us to hope in your unchanging word. Amen. Amen. So back again on Sunday, take a couple of days off, going to go bike riding yesterday. I'm going to go bike riding yesterday. I'm going to go bike riding tomorrow. Um, someone tried to steal my bike and bent it. I don't know how they did it. So I'm just, it's at the bike, bike shop. I'm going to collect it later today. And then tomorrow we will go bike riding to Hampstead Heath, where there is a secondhand bookshop. So Sue gets a shot of nature and I get a shot of books. God bless you. God be with you. And he is with you. Amen.